If you've been on the channel for any period of time, um, and you know, when I look back at my career on TV, one thing I would always try to do is not instill panic in people or get you all hyped up about something that may or may not happen. But I do want you to be weather aware. That's what we're looking at in the Atlantic today. We're seeing this disturbance moving uh, here into the Cape Verde Islands. It's Cape Verde season, so we're going to start to see this these disturbances move off of Africa, and we're going to watch them move into the Atlantic. And I think I think this is going to become a major hurricane. The reason I say don't panic, there's still way too many questions as to where this goes. I mean, look at this. The National Hurricane Center is saying there's a 90% chance of development here as this kicks off to the east. So, you know, it's likely going to happen. Just some observation, too. Some other things going on across the Atlantic. We've got this disturbance here just to the west of Florida it's probably just going to bring some really heavy rain across the Gulf Coast states again, and we're dealing with this boundary. Look how everything is just converging here across parts of the Midwest. you got some cooler air from the Northeast, some cooler air from the North trying to move in uh, across the Central Plains, and everything just getting buckled up here. So we've got more heavy rain possible again today across this region. And then look, your jet stream screaming across the North. This is where everything is moving, and eventually what we're going to see through the next month to two this starts to drop south. It's going to bring our change of season, but it's also it's going to start making things feel a lot cooler. It's going to start to become windier across the country as we head toward winter. All right, let's look at the upper level pattern, and then we're going to start to look a little bit further to the north and west back across the continental United States and the lower 48. There comes what would be our major hurricane. This is the operational European. I want to show you this because here, look, everything Pretty flat, a decent ridge in the upper levels, looking very healthy, not just for hurricane development, but for everything to continue this westward trajectory. But things start to shift up once we get toward Friday and Saturday. Now, this is the operational European. This is what I think we're starting to see. And some of the models are clustering up a little more too, keeping this thing out to sea. I'm not saying it's going to go out to sea. I would tell you if you had to say, do you feel better about it going out to sea today or, or, or yesterday? Today, certainly, the ensemble guidance is a little bit closer to keeping it out to sea, but I'm certainly not letting my guard down. This ridge, with this type of setup, you, you're you not going to bring anything into the lower 48. I'm not saying you wouldn't to the northeast, but it's going to be pretty tough to bring it into uh, the southeast anyway. The operational European opens a window here with this stronger trough to the north and starts to tug this system further north. This is Bermuda. So yesterday, it the GFS had it east of Bermuda. Now you're seeing the operational run. Keep it just to the west. A little too close for comfort, I think, for the northeast. So that's something to watch. This is the operational GFS. And by the way, it's turning much colder across parts of northern Alaska. Some snow in the forecast as we head through the week as some temp as our temperatures really start to drop here. Heavy rain across the south, but once we get toward Friday, Saturday, we start to look to the Atlantic. There comes our hurricane, what would be a hurricane. This is the operational run. I'm going to say this. I've said it before. Don't watch any single individual run and go, that's exactly what it's going to do. I'm going to show you why in just a moment. But the operational run has a major hurricane. This would have huge impacts for waves, tides across the East Coast, regardless if it comes ashore, even if it stays that far away from the coast. And now coming very close to the Northeast and then racing further to the North and East as it gets caught in the Westerlies. And by the way, we are turning much colder up here across the, the Northwest Territories. It's interesting to see, too, as you push this out. Look at the snow that starts to fall by the end of the month. I talked about this yesterday. Think about it, guys. If you keep it cold here, you keep more sea ice. You start to keep things a little bit colder as far as the ground goes. Are we looking at an early fall? I don't know. I think it's too early to talk about that. But I'll link below some thoughts of correlation of sea ice and how it impacts winter. So you can check that video out. This is the European Ensemble Guidance. Multiple members here clustering things up really now in two areas, one here and one here. As you can see with this, most of the tracks are now just off the coast. However, look, all it takes is one, right? So while more than 50 members keep this thing out to sea, a few scrape the coast. This is the AI version of the European Ensembles. It is a little more aggressive at clustering up two possible tracks, one a little further to the north. It brings one right into the southeast. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe 10 to 12 of those members have an, a land strike. And then the other, what, 30 members take it up to the north and keep it either out to sea or very close to the northeast. So again, not a set in stones type deal here, but you got to keep an eye on this. 
As we head toward Thursday and Friday, the GFS operational runs, uh, or rather the ensemble guidance, keeping most of the, most of it out to sea, but still just a, a chance here of something impacting the coast. Again, I'll be watching it this week. I think you have to have a few more days. We get some more data of what's going on in the upper levels, and we can track this a little bit better. Let's start across the west. A huge ridge just off the coast of British Columbia and the northwestern United States. That's keeping things pretty hot here, so I think we're going to stay fairly warm. There's that trough and that convergence zone we talked about, so more unsettled weather for the central U.S. and quite a bit warmer for the southeast relative to where we were last week. And then as we push this out in time, everything starts to become a little more zonal. So no huge ridge, no massive heat, but certainly it's going to be hot across a good chunk of the eastern United States, even the central U.S., considering that it is August uh, today across the west, under that ridge of high pressure, we're dry, so no precipitation falling. Although there could be some heavy rain, though, further to the east. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Here's your temperatures as you move through today. We're likely going to get into the 100s in some of the warmer spots into Oregon, Washington, Northern California, the Central Valley. It's just going to be way above average across this part of the country. Typically hot, though, across the southwest. Further to the east we go, this is where the heaviest rain is going to fall today. Some concern with that, too, as we head through today, especially into tonight, from West Texas into Oklahoma and Missouri, where some of these areas have already seen quite a bit of rain, so more on the way. And then as we head into Tuesday, our front starts to move a little bit further to the east. There comes the tropical rain moving north into the Tennessee Valley with that low, and then there comes the front. So our chance of thunderstorms move to the east and then our rain threat also starts to kick off to the east. Here's a look at your temperatures across Texas today. 90s. Oklahoma, back into the 90s. A little bit cooler, though, once you get north of Oklahoma into northern Missouri, into Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri. Uh, even, well, I would shit really northern Missouri. And then up into Wisconsin and Minnesota, we're into the 70s. So a little cooler, except for South Dakota. Western South Dakota is starting to heat back up into the 80s. And our temperatures will start to rebound slowly this week. We'll be back up into the 80s in many areas. In fact, close to 90, especially the further west you go across Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota. And relatively cool, though, to the north and east in the 70s. Further to the east and south we go. Dry across the northeast again as we move through today. Rain chances going up here across the southeast. It's not going to be a complete washout the further north you go, but you can see a chance of showers. This rain, though, along the Gulf Coast could be quite heavy at times. This will continue as we head into tonight, into tomorrow. Now we start to see that moisture lift north into uh, Alabama, north Georgia, Tennessee. I think it's going to collide. It's really on a collision course with this front, so it's probably going to get caught up in at least the moisture. So as the front moves east, now you're moving that tropical moisture north you're probably going to get quite a bit of heavy rain wherever your front moves. And that could be in this area as our uh, thunderstorms that would normally be associated with the front interact with a lot of deep tropical moisture. Here's a look at your temperatures this afternoon. I mean, think about last week. Yeah, it's still cool here in the southeast, but we were looking at upper 60s and low 70s. Now we're looking at mid to upper 70s. Warm, though, back across the mid-south, the Ohio Valley. Tomorrow, though, temperatures warming up even more, mid to upper 80s from Ohio, northeast up into even the northeast and southern New England. Maine could be baking tomorrow in the 90s, so some really warm temperatures across this part of the country for this time of year, and another hot day on Wednesday before we start to kick that off to the east. A little bit cooler, though, uh, across the mid-Atlantic into the Appalachians, a little more cloud cover here, chances for rain. And then there's some more cooler air too back across Michigan, Wisconsin, moving in with high temperatures, likely in the 70s as we head into Wednesday. So that's a look at what's going on. Again, if you want to check out the Arctic sea ice and how that correlates with what type of winter you may or may not see, we'll talk about that in this video. I think you'll enjoy it. Check it out if you've not seen it. See you there.